Hi, I'm, I'm Sebastian Lyon. I'm the executive chef at the, for Benchmark Hospitality at the Deloitte uh, University in Westlake, Texas. I'm uh, Shane Hawkins. I'm the banquet chef at the Texas A&M Hotel and Conference Center in College Station, Texas. Hi, I'm uh, Emil. I'm um, at the uh, chef at Standing Week in Sweden. My name is Niklas, and uh, I'm the head chef at the Sikuna Hotel in Sweden. My name is AJ, and I'm uh, the head chef at the Cast. Um, I also have worked at uh, a restaurant in Sydney. Chefs like to compete in general. Do they like the competition? We compete every day. Would <laughs> yeah. you rather be in a closed Every room? day is a competition. Yeah. You compete against your guests every day. Every day. So. Yeah, I, I didn't cook coming up at all. My grandmother cooked a lot. But even still, I, I had an, all intentions of being an engineer when I grew up, like when I was little. I did not want to cook. But I got a job summertime between school and fell in love with cooking and found my passion and just pursued. You know, um, I, I didn't do well in studies, didn't do well in life actually. So yeah, I was, I was torn up by my parents from my home. And uh, there was only one thing that you know, my dad wanted me to, I come from an engineering background family. Everybody in my family are boring engineers. So and I didn't do well, so nobody would talk to me. And, uh, <laughs> so this is the only competi competitive examination you know, in India, back in where I did my hotel school. It's the only examination I passed. I wanted to go in defense, was thrown out from there too. So I, I, I came in here and I was like, hey, this is easy. Yeah? You know, you're cooking in hotel school, everything is ready, your instructors are teaching you. And I was like, ha, this is the easy thing. I was a lazy guy. And that's how I became a chef. I would say, uh, I didn't know what at all, what to do. I just wanted, so just one day I um, decided I want to do something creative. So I just uh, entered culinary school. Uh, uh, by then I didn't know the difference between dill and uh, parsley, so it was, uh, uh, <laughs> it was chaos. But the, at the end of that three year ride, I was, I was the best in class and I just found something really big in life and since then I've been cooking every day and it's it's the best thing I've ever done. It's the same for me. I didn't really know what to do um, and uh, I was feeling I can't sit still. I need to <laughs> do stuff all the time. So actually one of my old friends went to to chef school so I, I joined him there and uh, now I can get out of it. I love what I do. Mm. Notice how we're basically all just a bunch of misfits. You know, we <laughs> you know, failed at something and then we found this thing and all of a sudden realized that we too can do something really yeah. interesting in life. Uh, I was like you. <laughs> I've I heard chefs are like, are, are, kind of, are kind of rock stars. I mean, they go into restaurants, people don't, they want to they sit close to the kitchen, or at least a lot of people I'm, I'm running around. And what, yeah. Do you feel that, is, is that added pressure or does it make it more exciting? Well, I would say it's it's exciting, but I've, at the same thing, I don't think people really understand what it takes to be a chef, because it, it's not a rock star uh, <laughs> profession. Just the look of it, it may be that, but that's, it's, it's, it's that's, the, that's the problem we have now with young chef. Yeah. Is they see just rock star yeah. celebrity, but they don't feel what it is to be in the kitchen. The long hours, the weekend. They see the end result. Don't see, yeah, yeah right. they see you celebrity. You walk in a restaurant. You're doing fancy food, and then but they don't realize before you do that, <laughs> you got to put the work in. And mm -hmm. It's it's different, and that's why we have issue right now to find staff because as soon as they get in the kitchen, they're like, "Whoa, that's not what I want to do. I want to be on TV and cook for <laughs> celebrity. I want to do that." But you got to do that before you get there. The best chefs for all time have always been the chefs that understand that we're not here cooking for prep lists. We're not here cooking for the chef. We're here cooking for guests, for people. And too often we're insulated from those people. We don't meet those people. We don't see them. And it sets up a disconnect. And, you know, when you go to places like Noma or, you know, Fabican, places like that, you know, some of the great restaurants down your way, all of the best restaurants in the world, the chef understands that they're there for the guests. It's about the guests. It's not about us. And that's the problem with this rock star culture. You know, and I live both sides of that. I can't walk down the street out here without, you know, signing autographs. Which is wonderful, because I'm a chef. I take two seconds, I make somebody's day. But ultimately, what you're saying is the biggest problem 
Kids are coming into our industry with no sweet clue what it's going to take. The first question I get asked in cooking schools, how do I get a show? Well, you do it the way I did it. As I said earlier today, you know, 17 years in the trenches, 16 hours a day, no family, no holidays. And then I saw a camera. It worked for me. Last question, I'll let you guys go, and, and you guys have been great. Uh, what's, what's your favorite part of your job? Making people happy. I mean, they come to eat food. That's what we do. But the, the, what we get for it is, is worth every hour. Every hour. And you get to work with people and laugh and have fun and be creative and by myself and with people also, and to learn from, from others. And this goes for the judges too. What's your favorite part of the job? He loves you too. Well, you know, I had my own businesses for a long time in Philadelphia, and one of them was that a, a, we did 75, 80 weddings a year. It was a, you know, we do a lot. Of, and often people ask me that question, you know, what motivates you? How do you, you know, doing this all the time? And I would say, you know, it's about the guest. You know, some family has asked me to be a part of, you know, the most important day of their lives, or their kids' lives, or, you know, and that's an honor, and it's a responsibility, and it's a real motivator because, you know, you, you don't want to let them down, you know? You love what you do, and you get to be a part of something really special, and you get to do it all the time. So it motivates you to not become complacent, you know, and then you really realize how important your role is and how much you really affect the guest. So, you know, it really just gives you the opportunity to be driven to be the best and be very guest-centric, which is I think what you need to be to be successful in this industry and in whatever, you know, Part of the industry you're in, if you're in a cafe, you're in a high end restaurant, or a banquet house, you know? You know, the question I get a lot of times is just like, how can you spend so much time in the kitchen and it's gone in a few minutes? <laughs> you know, you cook for your family, you cook for your friends, you cook all day long, and then 10 minutes later, the food is gone. And, 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 that, and that's what it is about. It's about to see people in 10 minutes killing your food because it was so good and then you you spend yeah you spend a lot of time on it but it's so it's so nice to see it because after that they're going to talk about it for hours yeah. Yeah. days yeah. months they're going to remember our last year dinner you did for them so guests come to your restaurant if they have a good time and good food they're going to come back um, or they're going to talk about it and on social media it's even uh, make a bigger impact on it because they're going to talk about it everywhere you guys like when people, when you look out, you see people taking pictures of, of your food? It's always a good sign. Yeah. It's always a good yeah. sign, yeah. yeah. In this day and age, yeah. You gotta, <laughs> you gotta like it. You're a fool if you don't like it. it but I am just, is better. <clears throat> yeah. 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 Having said that, you know, there's a limit. Like, we, it's, it's supposed to <laughs> yeah. be hot. Yeah. 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 The lighting's not right. Yeah. Yeah. It's not. <laughs> But it, it's so funny sometimes you look in the restaurant and you see all the, the tables place. taking a picture <laughs> yeah. and like, Are you eat it? <laughs> I get it, but come on. Yeah. Also, I just want to share one that hard work does pay off eventually, especially for the younger, the younger come, like eventually it, it, you get to a point where you made a statement and you're pretty much proud. You might not see it in three or four years of being a sous chef or a line cook, but eventually down the road you stick with it. It, it, good things will come to you if you work hard for it. This is one thing I love about this industry.